Hey guys, Daniel Zero, how you doing? I hope all is well in YouTube land, <laughs> whatever part of the world that you are in. Okay, uh, I'm going to make a quick video about some firewood and uh, firewood issues. Um, this winter for us has been uh, pretty unusual in the fact where it's been really, really wet. We haven't had a lot of snow. We've only had a, a snow a couple of times with a little bit of snow. But it has been above freezing uh, quite a bit, which means the ground is wet and muddy and everything is just wet and the air is wet. Uh, and it just makes it hard to find uh, good dry firewood. And uh, sometimes, you know, no matter your best efforts and your best preparations, things just don't work the way you hope that they would work. And weather has a lot to do with uh, how things do work or don't work. Um, I have not yet had to get all the materials that I need to build a little wood shed, which I'm going to do in the spring for sure, after this winter especially. Uh, build a little wood shed where I can keep stuff definitely out of the weather. Uh, right now I use pallets and stuff to keep it up off the ground, and then I just cover my wood piles with tarps. And sometimes if you get a little pinhole or water sits on a tarp long enough, it will seep through. And uh, dry wood will soak up moisture really, really quickly. And then when you, you know, it'll dry out uh, within a couple of days of you splitting it, but that's still a couple of days where you're trying to deal with wet firewood, and wet wood does not burn very well. Uh, so that's where I have found myself in, is a position to where I have lots of wood, but most of it is damp uh, and wet. Uh, some of the stuff that I bring up out of the hay field or along the creek, well, as it sits on the ground, it just, it just sucks moisture up out of the ground. Or if the end of the tree is in the creek uh, and it just sucks, you know, moisture through the end of the tree, uh, and then you have you have uh, wet firewood. No matter it's seasoned or not, uh, it has been down for a couple of years, but it still is going to be damp, and you still got to saw it up and split it up and stack it and let it dry out for a couple of days before you can actually use it. So, what I have is uh, is a couple of dead standing trees that are away from. Uh, every all the buildings are away from everything where they're not going to cause any issues if they come down in a storm or something uh, I have left them for this reason because that is where I'm going to get my dry firewood for the next couple of days is off of a dead standing tree uh, whenever they're still standing up they're not laying on the ground sucking water up they're not uh, you know getting leached in from anywhere they're, they're not moist they're still standing so all the water is not sitting on them or they're not laying in water the, the water just runs off of them and that'll give me some dry firewood. And like I say, these, these couple of smaller trees are in an area uh, of our property to where if they do come down, it won't be a big deal. It won't cause an issue. They're not going to hit any buildings or the house or nothing like that. So, uh, like I say, I leave them. And I will cut them. When they get to the point where they're still really, really getting rotten and rickety, then you got to bring them down so that way you don't fall down on you. The old timers call them widow makers. Sometimes they'll fall on the dude and make a widow out of his wife. So you got to be careful. It's not something to take lightly. But it is a way uh, to get some dry firewood uh, for a few days for to keep our house warm. Um, you know, we, we burn a lot of wood to heat our house. I do have a furnace backup, but you know, every time that furnace kicks on, it's just you're paying money. Uh, so I would rather heat the house with wood than have the, the electric bill be a little bit higher from running the furnace. So anyway, we're going to uh, take a walk up to this tree. Uh, I think I know which one I'm going to go get, so we'll go out and get after it here directly. And uh, I'm dealing with a foot injury. I don't know what happened. My foot hurts. And that's just another thing that adds to the uh, how things go sometimes. You just got to, you know, we got we to gotta get wood. We got to build a fire. No matter you're not feeling up to 100% or not, it's still some of the things that you got to do. So, you know, living on a homestead is not always uh, as glamorous as they make it seem on TV sometimes. Uh, sometimes it's a real pain and the patootie. But uh, it just is what it is, and, and uh, you got to do what you got to do. And uh, when you're injured or if you have uh, any kind of a disability, sometimes all you can do is, you know, all you can do is all you can do. Uh, if you're doing the best you can, that's all, that's all that you can do. So don't get down on yourself. It may take me a while to get up the hill to get to where this tree is and, you know, pack my saw up there. Uh, but I'll get it down and I'll get it uh, at least sawed up in the logs and stuff before nightfall hits and get a couple of them down here so we can get our fire going. And uh, so we'll take it uh, through the whole process. But anyway, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing because I need that dry firewood to make a long story short. Sorry I rambled. <laughs> I need some more coffee. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys in a bit.
Alrighty, so there's the tree that I'm gonna get is this little oak right here uh, That oak I think it, it got nailed uh, about last year with uh, the, the beetles that come in those wood borne beetles and killed that tree uh, And that's a small enough tree to where I can drop it right here in this clearing By myself without worrying about anybody getting injured and all that kind of stuff. There's a big dead one right there but that thing is pretty gnarly and it goes up and it twists and it turns and it's leaning the wrong way and I'm gonna have to wait till I get some other dudes out here to help me bring that one down because I don't want to try to bring that one down by myself because well I like living and I don't want to die <laughs> so we'll leave that big one there but this small one here is the one we're gonna go after we'll drop it right here in this clearing in the barnyard here I got lucky that we got a good one right here close to the house which is a blessing from God because my with my foot hurting and with the weather being bad and coming in, uh, we got one right here close that we can drop that's not going to cause a danger to anybody. And uh, we get it down, saw it up, and we got dry firewood. So uh, we'll get after it here in a bit. dry firewood for a few days that is if the ghosts don't need it all up first I'm, I'm, I'm apparently dead standing oak is delicious I don't know I may have to give it a try here and see but uh, I don't know not a professional lumberjack dude I don't have a degree in treeometry or any of that kind of stuff it's just how I drop all dead trees for firewood that's why I didn't make it a how-to because I don't know I just do it I'm just a dude so there you have it you guys thanks for watching uh, remember this little tip bring down a dead tree if you need dry firewood so you guys have a great day god bless me and there we go getting it done as a team everybody what it's all about working as a family just because they're kids and just because a couple of them are girls don't mean that they can't do uh their part to help us out around and everybody's eager to do it and that's how we get a lot more done working as a team and as a family so now the end again for reals Buzz buzz, the end.